there are two questions that we need to ask ourselves in when we're doing any form of research. One is, does it contribute to our fundamental understanding? And that's why when you come to me and you say, the problem is that we do not have a table, so I'm going to do some research and we will have a table, then I say to you, that's not a research problem, that's a practical problem. And if, if before you did something, you don't have a table, but afterwards you do, then what you did was not research, it was carpentry. So to get to research, we need to say, what is it that we don't understand well enough? So does it contribute to our fundamental understanding? Then comes the next question, which is, does it produce usable results? So it's all very well that we understand a little bit more. So the concept of Hilbert's Hotel is if you have a, a hotel with infinite rooms and you have infinite guests, will there be one room for each guest? I would assume there should be because it's infinite rooms and infinite guests. The null hypothesis is there is not enough room for each guest. That's the null hypothesis. You're going to probably like me say, okay, and so why does that matter? Um, why does it matter whether there's a thing called infinity or a thing called infinity plus one? Um, and, and so that's the second question is, does it produce usable results. Those are two questions. Now, that gives us four quadrants. So if we look at this, this is Bohr's structure of the atom type of research. So it, it's, Bohr is not remotely worried about whether it is useful what he's doing, but he does look for the fundamental understanding as to the workings of the atom. And so other people after Bohr can then say, well, now that we know that this is what the atom looks like, we would be likely to split or fuse it. But they're not trying to split or fuse. Bohr is not trying to split or fuse it. Bohr is simply saying it is splittable or it is fusible. Then you get Edison's quadrant, which is how do I make a light bulb? What do I do? I take a filament, I test it. If it, if it, um, burns, I, if it stays burning, I use it. If it doesn't burn, I stop using it. And so he carries on. And can you remember Edison at some stage when he had tested element number 2700 or something like that, um, he still hadn't found a filament that will make a light bulb. And somebody said to Edison, well, doesn't that trouble you? And he said, no, I now know about 2500 items that do not make a light bulb. So that's Edison type of research. Trial and error, it doesn't make us understand. And can you remember why Edison eventually managed to make a light bulb? He realized that it's oxygen that oxidizes the light bulb and that consequently it is in the presence of oxygen. And then he had an aha alibness and he moved into, so he says, they oxidize, which is what Bohr says. Then he says, okay, if I take the oxygen out of the light bulb and I replace that with arrogan, then it can't oxidize and it'll carry on. And what happened? He replaced it and it worked. And here's Pasteur's quadrant. But there's one quadrant that's empty. It doesn't contribute to our understanding and it doesn't help. And that is the area of myths, legends, and rumors. So that's where we do learning style research in my field. And also that's where we have big fights about whether um, hydroxychloroquine will help for um, COVID because my cousin uh, who had been in the tropics and had hydroxychloroquine, he survived COVID. And then when we do a large scale study over there, we find out that no, it doesn't work. So rumors are here. This is where our research problems actually live. It's where people talk about things that we don't know. And then we can either do fundamental understanding, we can do this, or we can do this. And so one of the reasons why um, people stopped researching uh, hydroxychloroquine is that nobody was able to theoretically say, well, what is the pharmacological action of this? 
Whereas in in um, the case of ivermectin, why they did start researching it more was that somebody was able to say, if you have um, ivermectin has strong anti-inflammatory qualities. And if you have COVID, you tend to have a lot of inflammation. So what if we tried ivermectin's anti-inflammatory qualities on this inflammation? The jury is still out. But the reason why we can do this research is that we have a philosophical or theoretical problem here, and we have a way of testing it practically. I'm going to pause for a minute just to get feedback from you, whether you're understanding where I'm going to with Pasteur's quadrant. 